Welcome to episode three of Point Fighter Live Fantasy Show with your host, Mike Pombero and Jason Borelli. What's going on, y'all? Welcome, welcome, guys. Uh, make sure you guys are sharing. Make sure you guys, when we're talking, don't be afraid to comment. Don't be afraid to tell us what you think. Uh, how you doing, by the way, Jason? I'm doing fantastic. How about you, Mike? Man, I'm excited about today. I've done, had a lot of awesome trips to uh, both these places. Uh, we're going to be talking about Mexico. We're going to be talking about Venezuela, some of their top fighters. Uh, you tell me about Venezuela and Mexico. Have you been to both of those places? Both. I've been to both places. I mean, and uh, I tell you what, both times, uh, every fight was was tough. I mean, every fight. Uh, some some of the, pe the, list, uh, the people that aren't on the list today uh, probably don't even, you know, remember uh all of their names but i tell you what uh i, I was fighting uh down there as hard as i've ever fought um what? both mexico and venezuela when i went to venezuela i think that uh i was it was like by this by the skin of my teeth it was like uh every fight was going into overtime uh fighters i didn't know young fighters older fighters i got an axe kicked in the head you know you name it uh <laughs> and uh in mexico uh, been there a couple times and, uh, same thing, just every fight, very close, uh, lost down there. I think the last time I went down there, I lost, uh, to a young guy and, uh, you know, some, you know, some of the people that we don't get to see up in the States, uh, that often, or sometimes you don't hear their names very often, but they're some of the best in the world. So, uh, I'm, I'm honored to give them their props today. Yeah. And that's what we want to do. We want to do our best to, you know, probably highlight some of these fighters that a lot of people have seen because a lot of these guys are sponsored and do travel, do the uh, NASCAR circuit, the WACO circuit. Uh, but also, like you said, uh, I'm probably going to mention some people that aren't on our little team and kind of throw them in there and just kind of make mention of them as well. Now, talking about Mexico and Venezuela, we're talking about, you know, Latino. They're both Latino. They're very passionate. Um, like you said, every time you go there, same thing with me. I've always had a tough fight. Everybody's always trying to take my head off. And they always have something to prove. I feel like if you are somebody, those guys get up for that fight. And they can't wait yeah. to fight. You got something to prove. And they want to be the one to say, yeah, I beat that guy. And, and they're sending you off. You know, And not only that, but I remember when I go to these places, how the crowd yes. gets behind their fighter. And it's it's... You know, unless you're a top fighter and don't allow those things to mess with you, it can get the best of you. Because, yeah. again, you're passionate. It's like a soccer match. Ole, ole. They start yeah. going. Crazy. I enjoy it. Yeah, yeah it people land on you. Yeah. yeah, people land on you. They go crazy. They start saying, oh, you know. So, uh, but let's just let's talk about comparisons. I looked. I did a little bit of looking up myself in yeah. Mexico. Uh Talking about population, they got 129 million people. Venezuela barely has 29 million people. So, comparison in size, they're not they're not very close uh, when it comes to amount of people. As well as Mexico's twice the size of uh, Venezuela when you talk about square mileage or square kilometers. So, but when we're talking about both teams, to me, I think these guys are really close. I think they're really close. <laughs> And I think it all depends on the matchups on how this thing might end. But let's let's get into people. Um, let me see. First of all, you know, I was thinking about one of the guys that's kind of hot right now, or he's been hot, um, Zane Pedraza. So you want to bring up Zane first? Or would absolutely. You like yeah, absolutely. I've been, I've been watching Zane for a while. You know, of course, I like his style. I love his style. You know, he's, he's – uh, uh, a lot of a lot of things I like to do, he does. You know, his front leg is, I mean, it's excellent. Uh, you know, he likes to push forward with it, likes to to set up his hands with his with his legs. Um, he's very versatile with his kicking. Uh, nice side kick. Uh, likes to get that leg up and and shoot straight, even with the hook round. It's very tight. Um, you know, it's a lot to deal with. Uh, a, a guy like that, when he has the endurance to, to you know, kick 100 times around, uh, it's a lot to do. You got to work the entire time. OK, so, uh, you know, I mean, he's, he's the type of guy who could who could beat anybody on any given day. I've seen him with some some excellent performances, uh, particularly at the U.S. Open a couple of years ago. Um, we were in uh, we were doing uh, the, the super fights or the open weight called the open weight. 
And um, I know it ended up being uh, him. He won his, his, uh, his ring. And uh, I ended up fighting Avery uh, Plowd in, in our ring and I lost to him. So, uh, and I just, just remember everybody talking about how, how awesome Zayn fought that day and how amazing he was and, and how much he was on. Um, and um, I mean, it's a, big, it's a big challenge to fight uh, a strong heavyweight like Avery in the finals. But uh, I just remember him, you know, performing really, really well at that tournament. Uh, and then I watched him in his division and uh, I mean, he's just he's 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 a lot to deal with on any given day. He could beat anybody very, very fast, um, very fluid. Um, I like him. I like his style a lot. So, yeah, I, I, I've i seen Zane as well. I've seen him win some grants, some lightweight grants. I've seen him win some open weights. So he's he's cracked through um, over here in the States and NASC. I know he used to do NBL. I know he trains out there with Pablo, uh, Eker and a couple of those other guys. So he's got a nice little stable of guys to work with. Um Absolutely. I, I agree with you now when he comes forward, but I notice he comes forward a lot on the lightweights. For me, I notice that he loves to more like clash legs. He likes more right. to kind of back, be patient, watch people kick at him. Great at counter kicking. Um, I do notice that he does use the ring. He moves around and sometimes will try yeah. to suck try to blitz but the one thing i do notice like you said about avery i notice he does have a tough time with tall guys or people that like to come in straight uh yeah. Yeah. Venezuela, i know a lot of these guys like to push but for me they like to push with their leg so i see zane matching up really well with most of these guys i'm trying to think if anybody does punch uh maybe apache uh, maybe you know we'll talk about some of these other guys later but yeah. i think zane match up pretty well with most everybody because of the style of fight. And again, Zane, I think he's with team dojo right now, if I'm not mistaken, which I is a pretty, so. yeah, I think him traveling, being sponsored, not only talks about how great of a fighter he is. If we got to go out of our country to pick up some of these guys that are obviously beating up some of our guys, but I think also this is helping him to get even better, get more experience, get out to more fights and get, better quicker you know Absolutely. what i mean yeah he's he's still young i mean maybe maybe he's 26 or something like that he, yeah. he is i do i do agree with you he's he's a very young guy one thing too i also noticed uh we got a couple guys watching one of them is a apache i wanted to say what's up to apache how's it going sir uh i just want to say yeah. hello to you. thank you for your support thank you for well, thank you sir and, um, you know, so we just talked about somebody from Mexico. Let's talk about someone from Venezuela. And this is a guy that actually we just talked about before we came on. And you had fought him. His name is Ronaldo. Yes. Um, Ronaldo. This guy to me, out of uh, all the guys on the team of Venezuela, I think he's that dark horse. I think he's that guy that people haven't heard much of. But actually, I think when I saw him fight you, I don't know if he beat you, but it was a pretty close fight. I mean, you guys were going back yeah. and forth, yeah, and you're did. a kicker, and this guy, <laughs> this guy was kicking with you. Yeah. But the other great thing is I see him fight other people, and I see him use his hands. I see him use the ring. I see him be, be very patient. Um, so to me, it's great to see that because – the one thing I did notice about a lot of the Venezuelans, they fight very similar. A lot of them are Tony Hansani guys. A lot of them guys like to start and apply the pressure with the leg. They like to back people up. But uh, Ronaldo's a little bit different. You came at him with feet, so he felt the pressure. So he felt the best thing he could do is put his foot up and kind of come at you and keep you right. away and run into stuff. But, I, again, I did notice that when he fights other people, he changes it up. He adapts. He does different things. And that's the one thing I like about him. And for me, I think he's the hardest matchup uh, when it comes to the guys for all the guys from Mexico. I think for him, he can pretty much hang with almost all of them. Um, I don't know if he can run away and, and get up the score because, as you know, a team fights, it's about a, accumulation of points. So you got to go strategy. Sometimes you want to try to neutralize a really good guy. And sometimes you want to try to rack up on the points so that way everybody else can kind of keep it neutral and right. you got that weak link. But this guy right here, I definitely think he's going to be one of the hardest guys for Mexico to take care of. And uh, like I said, he's an all-around great fighter. People forget about him. This guy's still around. I think he's probably in his 40s. And he still looks – a lot of these guys from Venezuela actually look like they're in their 20s. It's pretty amazing. But 
What do you got to tell me? Because you you fought this yeah. guy. Right before. now, though, I tell you what, and it's crazy because I don't remember fighting them, and shame on me because it's probably something I wanted to forget, right? Because I didn't win. But, <laughs> I remember him by first name, you know, just Reynaldo. And uh, it's something when people just remember you by your first name, then you really, you know, then you really got it, right? Uh, when, you, when they know you by your first name, you know? I guarantee, so, he knew your, I guarantee he knew your name and he was out to get you. And that's yeah. one of the things about being great is sometimes you might overlook some of these other guys not knowing who they were. But I guarantee when he saw you, he couldn't wait. You know, he was coming at you, so... Yeah. He, I tell you what, I, and I, I, uh, I'm sure that at the time when I fought, I just, you know, I don't, I don't, back then I probably wasn't thinking, you know, he is who he is. I just thought, Hey, this is a fight. I gotta, you know, just like any other fight, but, um, I'm sure I didn't underestimate him, but I remember, I, I was sure that he used to throw a spinning blitz. I was sure that he used to throw, somebody correct me if I'm wrong. If that wasn't him, let me know who it was because I thought it was Ronaldo who threw a spinning blitz. Uh, either way, he was very versatile, um, definitely scored some moves on me that I, I didn't expect. Um, they, they came yeah. out of nowhere, back leg roundhouse kicks, uh, tied me up. It was a really, it wasn't a beautiful fight because we were both just, I mean, it was scrappy, you know, we were scrappy. Uh, okay. but it was, you know, I mean, when you, when you have a fighter that is, that's, that's throwing you off your game, that's usually how it looks and up looking a little scrappy. Uh, but, uh, I just remember him by reputation and, uh, of course, it's an honor to fight him, um, and um, I'm not sure if we fought other than that uh, other times, but um, definitely he he's he's uh, very crafty. You know, he reminds me of he reminded me of um, Fortunato Aversa. I don't know why. Yeah, you know, yeah. That's like, another. You too, too, kind of like that. You know, kind of remind me of that same style. You're right. In like a team fighting situation, wouldn't be the one who would rack up points, but the one who could could get the win. The one who could um, get the. Uh, uh, Actually, you said he fought you in Guatemala in team fights. So was that? Said I just saw Apache. He was saying that he fought you in Guatemala in team fights. See, a lot of these guys, they're passionate. They remember everybody they fought. Yes. They remember all these things. You know what I mean? And I'm telling you, we're targets. We've always yes. been. That's all right. <laughs> that's all right that's all right i appreciate that i appreciate that i would love i would love to to revisit that and it was an honor and it's still an honor um you know when i when i you know when i when i go to a place like uh guatemala venezuela any other country i'm just so blessed to to, to have the opportunity to fight different fighters and to really you know uh uh you know feel what it's like to be a world uh competitor uh, you know, only way you can really be a world champion is to be a world competitor. You yeah, know? I, I agree uh, with that. I agree with that 100%. I was going to say, too, is that, you know, as much as they want to beat you up, the one thing that I also appreciate is, bar none, is the hospitality. When I've gone there, the way they take care of me, I've done seminars, I've been flown out there to do different types of things. And uh, for me, I like, I don't, I don't, I don't, they don't let me pay for nothing. They yeah. don't, let me anything I want. I mean, it's pretty much like, I feel like, I feel like a celebrity over there. And I mean, it, the, the way they choose like royalty, I would say even better than treat you here as a, um, Hey, saludos over there. Hector Salodio. You know, I think hey, when, I, when I went to Venezuela, they treated me like a brother. I mean, I, I it, still to this day, it, it's one of the, best trips probably my top three trips i've ever taken uh they treated me like a straight brother and uh it, it was amazing it was amazing um and uh yeah so i mean i'm, I'm excited to highlight these fighters say yeah but Ronaldo, like i said Ronaldo, uh just 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 you know we know him by, by his first name that's 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 how uh that's how nice he was you know that's how nice his skills were we just knew him by his first name so uh like to give him him props and and Thank you. If I, if I fought you before and I didn't remember, that doesn't mean that you didn't make an impression on me. I, maybe I wanted to forget, you know, <laughs> if, <laughs> if I didn't win the fight, you know. Let's, so. so let's move. Let's move on. Um, let's talk about another guy that, again, we talked about and mentioned him earlier. It's Pablo Moreno. Um, yeah. I'll go ahead and talk about Pablo first. And, and this, okay. and the reason why I'm going to talk about him is I met him a long time ago with Eker. They came down to Bob White's. They came to train. 
Um, and it's funny because, you know, I was older at the time and, and I don't think they knew who I was, but they knew my name. So after sparring, they're like, hey, who are you? And I told them who I was and they couldn't believe it. And they really nice. They're like, hey, I want you to come out. I went and did a seminar out in Mexico City and uh, I trained with the Okoyama team, I believe it was. And I was there for six hours and I had 20 of the just gnarliest kids I've ever seen just ready to do anything I wanted to. And they just I had 100 percent of their attention and they would do everything. And Pablo at the time. I remember was debating about not wanting to continue tournaments. And he had told me, you know, what do you think, man? You think you think it's too late for me to keep going? And I'm kind of happy that he stuck with it. And I don't know if you've noticed a lot of the posts he's made in the past years of his diet and his um, transformation, you know, where he's, he's actually yeah. got really focused and he's really gotten in a lot better shape. And I've seen him come a long way from where he used to fight. Now, uh, and he goes to Jody, he goes to Ross, he's come to me, Jack. So he goes and trains with some of the best people. Um, so again, Pablo, to me, I think he's only gotten better as of late. Yeah. In the last few years. One thing he does really well, he likes to probe, kind of keeps his hand out in front, watches for people to do mistakes, steps in on people. He's not fast, but I see him beat people, good people. And how does he do it? He has great timing. He watches people make mistakes. Another thing he does do is he does work a lot of fakes, tries to create mistakes. So he doesn't just wait for you to make mistakes. He tries to get you to mess up and create stuff. And he has a really nice check body. He throws a sidekick to keep people off. That's the one thing I wish he did a little bit more is kind of through his legs. I know he's tight as can be. I remember him trying to show me his splits and it's horrible. But he gets it <laughs> enough and he uses it well enough to keep people off of him, but he is a one point guy and he, he does well with it. I think I saw him just fight Yaskar, which we just talked about last week uh, in an overtime match. I think earlier this year, I don't know if it was AKA or where it was, but I watched them fight each other, came down to overtime. And he ended up uh, winning by a point. So like I said, this, and again, he's won grands. He won compete. He won Kevin Walker. I mean, yeah. come, come a long way. And, and to me, He's a tough matchup as well. When he's Absolutely. on against any of those guys, I see him doing well because a lot of these Venezuelans like the press and Pablo likes to pick up on people's mistakes. So I think Pablo, yeah. if anything, would neutralize all the fighters or he's going to step in on these guys. He's going to catch them. So what do you got to say about yeah. Pablo? I think, I, you know, a absolutely. I think that Pablo has definitely improved a great deal since the first time I saw him. I mean, not, not to say that he wasn't, you know, already on his way. Um, but uh, the first time I saw him, I think, first time I actually saw him, he was, he was fighting my brother at a tournament, my brother Larry. And, um, you know, I was, I was impressed, uh, but it wasn't, he wasn't someone that, that I thought I had to look out for uh, at, at the time. And then progressively, he just became, you know, more and more visible. Um, and I saw that he definitely transformed his, his skill set, uh, totally, you know, uh, developed in, 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 in so many ways. Um, he, he, he got faster with certain moves. Um, his endurance seems to be something that he has uh, really developed as well to the point where he's got a little more endurance. He seems to outlast some of his fighters. So I was watching him fight. I would see maybe in the beginning it would be a little tougher. It would go back and forth. And then you see the other fighter get tired and Pablo wouldn't get tired. You know, even even uh, it appeared to be like that at the uh, compete uh, nationals when he won grand champion. It seemed, seemed like, you know, uh, both rounds in the grand champion round, uh, he just got stronger. Uh, and 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 uh, especially, you know, at the end of the second round where, um, you know, maybe maybe his opponent was slowing down a little bit. Pablo was getting faster and getting stronger. Um, you know, so his, his, you know, he's in good shape, you know, so you talked about that earlier with him sharing his diets and his workout program. He's in good shape. He's fit. Um, and, uh, also noticed that, you know, he's gotten, fa he has gotten faster. He might not be the fastest kid on the block, but he's gotten faster. Um, he looks comfortable. Uh, at one point he didn't look, he wasn't sure. He didn't look too sure out there in the ring. Now he looks sure he looks comfortable. Uh, and I think, you know, we haven't even seen the best of him yet. So, you know, Pablo, yep, definitely one to look out for. I love the back fist. I love his back fist. 
You know, it's, it's cool. like something like people don't usually use it because they, they think they're going to get the check body punch. But man, if you can if you can pull it off, you know, pull it off. I mean, his back fist is, is becoming like, you know, it could be a signature move. It's really, <laughs> really nice. I mean, he's hitting people with that back fist. Uh, I'm talking about that offensive back. Uh, he's got great time. He's got great time. Yeah, yeah. He's, yeah. I, I love that move. Yeah, he steps in on people. He has that hand kind of out, kind of like Jotty style, kind of like Ross. Watches yeah. for people to step up or slide up or make the slightest mistake, and before you know it, he's in. And I think also because yeah. he's leaner, like you said, he's a little bit faster, and I agree with yeah. you. I think a lot of people before would last with him and then would outlast him. Where now, I think it's kind of the opposite. I totally yeah. agree. I think now, if you stay even with him, he kind of he's outlast yeah. a lot of people, and he's that's where he's taking him into deep water. And he's kind of winning yeah. a lot of. So yeah, yeah. I, I like. Oh, I think he's a tough that's, match. Absolutely, that's going to be the new thing. I think with fighters, whether they can keep their pace up, uh, you know, for for the whole two minutes or for the two two minute rounds or whatever. I mean, I saw with with Jack and Bailey just this past. Um, um, a couple, a couple uh, this past weekend uh, at the at the virtual um, fight two uh, uh, event that uh, Jack was able to keep up that pace for three rounds and and that fight that fight started so quickly. Uh, I think the new thing is going to be: can you start with that fast pace and finish with that fast pace? It's going to be the new test for fighters. You know, uh, before it was like just uh, getting used to the two minute round. You know, where people were. You know, you used to be used to be able to get five points and be out. Uh, then that two minute round really got a lot of people. You know, it really changed the game. Yeah. Uh, and the two two minute rounds. Now, can you keep that pace for the whole time? I think that Pablo has a, has an edge on that. You know, I think the fighters may be back in a day. I don't want to say we're stronger, but we're more like that tougher style. Like to come at you guys. Hey, you're welcome, Pablo. Oh, Love Pablo. you. Oh. And Zane. Love you too, guys. Okay. Us. Out to Mexico and visit you guys again. Get some seminars. Get some sparring. I love sparring with you guys. Or guys, come out to California as well or Pennsylvania. That's right. Uh, sorry, what was I talking about before that? Man, these guys, these guys, I wanted to say hi. I forgot, man. They, they talking about um, just, just with we were talking about the. the oh yes, yeah, so I was talking. About, I apologize. I was talking about the. I don't want to say they were tougher, but I want to say before. I feel like fighters had something to prove, and they were like. A little bit more scrappy, or not that they're not scrappy now. I want to say if I was to compare fighters, I think before they were scrappier. Now, I feel they're a lot more athletic. And like you said, I think condition, I think like athletic ability and some of the stuff they're able to do. Before, it was a lot more about having good balance and planting that yeah. good shit. Not only being first, but making sure you, you wipe the guy's face off, where I think yeah. now... It's all about that athleticism. Can you yeah. hang? Can you continue to do that for two minutes back to back? This, that. So you know, I agree. But let's go on to go. Let's go on because I want to make sure that uh, we got ten fighters to talk about. Then we got to pick somebody. So let's go on to another guy from Venezuela. Uh, we got Javier Calmenares. Which, um, <clears throat> if you did, you want to go first on this one? I don't want to go first all the time. I'll, you, I can go first. Yeah, sure. Want? Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll, uh, I'll I'll lead off with this one, Javier. You know what? Another one that I really enjoy watching. Uh, again, I'm not sure if we ever fought, uh, but uh, man, I, those kicks are really really amazing uh, on both sides. I really love seeing that. You know, uh, and you know, just when you know you think you're gonna kick with them, he'll punch. Uh, don't 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 doubt that. So I, w I was really impressed with um, his athleticism and. His uh, his technique. I mean, it's just beautiful to watch. Uh, not all. It's not always beautiful to watch when you watch fighters out there. But uh, his technique was excellent. Um, he 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 was uh, uh, very elusive, uh, unpredictable, um, and like I say, he could switch styles uh, very quickly. Uh, very impressed by this fighter. I don't. I don't. I don't. Uh, I mean, I don't know what what more. Uh, you know, it, it, in terms of power, if he fought like someone who's like a heavyweight or something like that, maybe they'd be able to, uh, you know, try to nullify some of the things that he's throwing at them. But, um, you know, when you get into the ring with Javier, you, you're in a, you're in a fight. I mean, you better come, you better come correct uh, because you could get hit with anything. Um, he can switch his, his, uh, his style on you. He's very offensive and defensive. Um, 
I wish I could have seen more of him. Uh, actually, yeah. as a competitor. Just to add it to his scrappiness, uh, there's a fight out there. If anybody wants to check it out, there's one that I kind of caught on the um, YouTube with him and Tony Hansani, and it's a full contact match where they fight two to three rounds. I don't want to give too much yeah. into it. A little bit of his scrappiness and him and Tony kind of going back and forth, not doing a point fighting match, but actually doing a full contact kickboxing right. match. And yeah. for him, you know, what's funny is, a lot of these guys are very similar. Javier loves to use that lead leg. Like you said, a lot of these Venezuelans are kickers. I mean, I feel like they're Taekwondo stylists. Like they could go to yeah, Olympic. Yeah. Well, he loves to use his feet. I love to see him use his hands more. I know he does use his hands, but I've seen him in team fights. I've seen him in individual fights where I'm hearing people in the background saying, Usa las manos, which is in Spanish. Yeah. Use your hand. Use you your know? Hand. So like sometimes – you know? Yeah, sometimes he, I think he just, I think he thinks his legs are so strong that he kind of doesn't want to go to his weaker weapon. But sometimes I'll see him kick, kick, kick and get real close. And instead of just going and blitzing, sometimes he'll go back, going, let me get back so I can start throwing the hook round and slap him in the face with a kick. Right. See, that's one thing I kind of think that I'd like to see this guy do a lot more. Or Now that he's older, I mean, you know, old dogs need to learn new tricks i mean hopefully he, he can still do that but when he does use his hands i agree with you he's a more well-rounded fighter he's a better fighter but i would say most of his fights i saw that he likes to depend on his leg he likes to use his leg that's sometimes his crutch he'll kick 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 he'll get real close and like i said rather than following up he'd almost yeah. like back up and put himself back in a kicking range even with that full contact fight with tony it wasn't yeah. until Tony caught him with some good punches that he decided to go, hey, I can punch. Why not punch? He just kept trying to kick. So, like I said, I think, I think – go I, ahead. I think, I think that I, I think I kind of got, you know, um, mesmerized by, by, by the kicking and, and enjoyed watching it so much. And, and I know that you know, that doesn't always win fights. And I stopped paying attention kind of to whether he was winning the fight or not. I was just enjoying it so much. I really, another, really enjoyed watching <laughs> yeah. You're you're a great kicker, and the one thing about kicking is, you know, it takes a lot of stamina. At, yeah. at a young age, it takes stamina, and as you get older, and the one thing that, I mean, kind of impresses me is that these guys are older, and they're still kicking. You know what I mean? Usually people get older, like Jotty, start a punching. Richard Plowden, Anthony Price, start a punching. A lot of these guys start to punch because kicking becomes really hard. You know, it's not efficient. It's tiring. But all these guys have not strayed from what they love to do, which is kick, kick, kick. And the one thing I'm noticing now, maybe not before as much, but now I notice a lot of these guys that do kick a lot, that they get a little bit tired in the second half of the fight. And that's the one thing that does concern me about some of these Venezuelan fighters is they start off strong. And if they don't stay tactical and stay smart and kind of like serve, they throw a lot of waste, wasted kicks. Like for yeah. me, if I'm going to throw 10 kicks, I want to at least land seven or eight. I'm, You know what I mean? Yeah. Where I, a lot of these guys pump 10, 11, 12 kicks to land that one kick. Yeah. And me, conditioning-wise, I know that's very tiring. And sure. strategy-wise, I think as a fighter, I would want to move around. So right. for a lot of yeah. these guys, if I was fighting a Venezuelan fighter, I would suggest maybe moving around early in the fight – kind of neutralizing them unless you're really good at counter kicking to kind of like, you know, help tire them out, get those legs tangled and then maybe switch it to a blitz. Um, but like I said, that's the one thing that I, yeah, that's the one thing about a lot of these kickers, you know what I mean? Is that, yeah. is that it gets tiring and if they don't use the hands, I think that eventually they're going to have a problem. So uh, let's nice go on. Watch, right. It sure is nice to watch. I love, I love watching it. <laughs> I'm still a I'm still a fan of the game. I love watching just nice, you know, technique and their enjoy. fights are very exciting because people yeah. love to watch all this kicking back and forth. And nine yeah. times out of ten, they're kicking each other in the face. You know what I mean? Most of these yeah. kicks are landed on the face. Yeah. So everybody wants to see, nobody wants to see a side kick unless you drop someone, knock the yeah. window. But everybody wants to see a kick to the face. Those are always yeah. spectacular. You know what I mean? So hey, I've been seeing them all night. Let's talk about them. There's this guy by the name of Ooh, Juan Garcia Apache used to love to paint his eyes red. Uh, you know, 
He's been a guy that's been around for a while. I remember competing uh, against him and his team back in the day in uh, Guatemala, in Venezuela. We fought a WACO team champion, world team championship against um, some Venezuelan guys back in the day. And he's a tough guy. He, uh, he fights really well with a lot of the top lightweights. The one thing he does really well strategy-wise is he mixes it up. He likes to punch. He likes to kick. He, he's really good at controlling distance. The one thing that I notice about a lot of the Venezuelans, they like to actually close the distance. Where Apache, maybe because he's smaller and he's used to fighting bigger guys, at least a lot of the Venezuelan guys I see are all big. I mean, he's probably the smallest guy that I can think of on the team. I feel that he uses this strategy because of what he's used to fighting, and it works really well for him. I've seen him work a lot of angles. He works a lot of footwork. So to me, he fights a lot like an American fighter. He mixes it up. He goes offense. He goes defense. So for me, he's a really he's a really hard. Um, if he's fighting a small guy, I think he's a hard matchup. I think the only problem that he has though is with big people. So if I'm from Mexico, I'm gonna put somebody that's really tall, really long, really lanky, and just make sure that I keep him out of my crease, keep him out of my zone. But other than that, if he fights someone that's his size, he's really quick, he's really good at controlling the distance, and if you're a big guy and have bad technique, like a good example, if you kick and fall really heavy on your front foot, not a good guy for Apache. He's going to he's gonna come, come in and step on you. But if you're the type of guy that's long and lanky, puts that foot down and stays neutral and is really good at countering, I think you're going to have a good time, or not a good time, I should say, but an easier time with Apache as opposed to some of these guys. So for me, I think strategy-wise, you'd have to put the right guy against him. If not, it could be bad for you. But if you do put the good guy, or I should say the right guy, tall guy, and somebody that has good technique, I think that you can neutralize this guy. But what do you have to say about Apache? I know you said you didn't really watch much of him. So, you- yeah. Well, I, I what I what I what I what I did pick up on is you know something we just talked about just just a second ago about wasting technique. He's not one that wastes technique. He's not one that uh, is is throwing a lot of extra stuff just to throw it. Um, he's definitely you know up here. He's he's definitely solid with his with his his game. Um, he he's uh, I saw him actually with uh, Hakeem Walker, I believe it was, and uh, he's taller and he's uh, you know he can kick and he can you know he can move people around. Um, but Apache handled it really well. I thought I thought that um, especially coming in when when um, Hakeem was coming in, uh, Apache had some good counters. Um, I thought that. Uh, you know, he seems like the people's champion too, you know, so everybody's behind him and he, he gets the, the, you know, the atmosphere, you know, it's really something we really respond to our atmosphere. And, uh, you know, he seems to resonate with that and everybody, you know, uh, he gets, he gets people going. Um, and you're right. He does have to pray of, what's that? We need more guys like that. He's like a yeah. character. He paints his eyes red. He puts, a, yep. yeah, he comes out. Yes. Ooh, we love, we love, big. we need that. We need that. That's it. Absolutely. That's part of the fight, you know, and we, you know, when he, when he scores, it's usually with an array of, of moves. He's not very, he's not predictable at all. Uh, he seems like maybe, maybe the teacher uh, in some way of a lot of the guys that we talked about earlier, where they probably watched him uh, do it first. So, um, you know, that's, that's going to be the, the, the difference with him. He's not going to be one to, to waste the energy and uh, throw things just to throw them. He's going to, he's going to try to outsmart you. And, and which he will a lot of times, you know, so. Hey, so I don't want to do these ones last because then I'll be a bad guy. I, I should have done them first, but at the same time, I kind of wanted to save them. But for the ladies, let's get into some of the ladies from both these right. places. And you know okay. what's funny that um, for the ladies, honestly, let me look at my list because I wrote down the list of like people. Um, I would say everybody that I asked, Every single person that I asked that I knew from Venezuela, I went through my whole my whole Facebook contacts and people that I knew. Every person put this person's name down. Joyce Blanco. I'm sure you remember Joy- jo- Joycey, yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, but this other fighter I did not know of, and from Mexico, everybody put this fighter as well. 
Uh, hopefully I say her name right because I've seen Kayla, I've seen Kaya, but hey. Kaya Mia, um, I just got hipped up to her. I checked her out. I see why people talk about her. Um, she is, she is, you know, she is pretty amazing uh, martial artist. So, so just to give props to both these girls, everybody, not one person did not mention these ladies. Now, just to give an honorable mention from Venezuela, uh, Yoli Guyen was another person that they had mentioned. And from Mexico, Paula Duque, they, those both ladies came in a close second, but not everybody said their name. Most everybody did, but everybody, everybody that I asked said these two ladies' names. So it just goes to show you how much uh, respect and uh, how much they really feel like if I was going to send someone for the ladies, yeah. these are the going to send. So let's get into an old school person first that people don't know of. Um, I remember Joyce really well. I remember her winning grants way back in the day. And uh, is that Joyce right there? I see nah. her someone's putting her, putting her name. Yeah, they're just saying Joyce Blanco. Yeah. <laughs> Joyce was tough. Joyce was probably one of the first girls that I can think of from another country that was coming over here winning and taking some of those NASCA grants from some of our top competitors. The one thing she does very well, she's an she's a great kicker. She's a big girl too. And I when I mean a big girl, most girls are tiny, move, she's tall and she's got long legs and she's a great kicker. She loves to press forward. She's good at pressing forward. Um I saw her fighting against Dottie White. She fights really well. She's scrappy. So to me, I feel that people that like to scrap with her or that come at her don't do well against her because she's scrappy. She's tough. She's a fighter. She's awesome at counter kicking. If you kick with her, um, she's great at if she gets to you with her leg and doesn't land, she follows up right away with the hands. She's really quick at that. The one thing that I did notice was her Achilles heel. I saw her have a hard time with Nancy Price. I saw her have a hard time with some of the smaller people that are really good at moving and cutting the ring and creating distance. And that's because sometimes I think she is tough. She is strong. Sometimes she gets a little over aggressive. I feel she thinks like, oh, I'm going to beat this girl. Get over here. Like I'm chasing her down. And sometimes that can get the best of her. The people that I saw that beat her, that did well, usually were people that used the ring real well, were patient and weren't stupid enough to go straight or head on at her. Cause I felt like everybody that went straight on or head on with her usually met the wrath of Joyce. That's the ax kick, the roundhouse, the hook kick, the side kick, the butt. She threw all that stuff on you if you came at her. But like I said, if you made her impatient and kind of got her to chase, I felt you had a better shot, but you don't want to fight this girl. She's tough. She's won numerous grands and uh, hopefully she's still doing well because she was an awesome fighter. I still remember her to this day. What do you, what do you remember about Joyce? Absolutely. Awesome fighter. Awesome person. Uh, Joyce Blanco. Um, she, you know, I, I could, I could say that one of the reasons she might have had um, a little trouble with smaller fighters and and maybe was a little um, over aggressive sometimes because when she first came out, I think they tested her. Uh, you know, some of the fighters like Dottie White, uh, some of the other fighters kind of they wanted to test her metal. You know what I mean? So uh, they 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 didn't know who she was and they tried to get tough with her. And they found out that that was a mistake. I've seen her knock out a few people. Uh, and, uh, you know, beautiful technique. Nothing malicious, just beautiful technique. Uh, you're right. She was a complete package. Uh, definitely a throwback to uh, her uh, Venezuelan brothers that came before her over, you know, and, and, and uh, you know, she, she was, she was uh, no different in terms of being totally uh, versatile. Um, she could adjust to, to mostly any situation. Uh, I've, I've seen her adjust to the smaller fighter, but I'm sure there was a couple times where, you know, she, she might have been in, in the mode in, in, that, in that zone of, of, of going hard and being aggressive. Maybe she had just fought somebody right before that or something like that. But she was usually able to adjust. Uh, she was tall and strong um, and, uh, you know, powerful. 
Uh, and, um, you know, like you said, you said it really well, though, you know, they, people tried to test her in the beginning and they, they learned that that wasn't the way. Um, but she could, she could usually outpoint most of the women that she fought. Um, so then where do you go from there? You know, when, when she's fast and outpoint you and you can't push her around. So at any, at any given time, she could have been, uh, the number one, uh, fighter, uh, in the world, uh, in, in, in NASCAR. I know she didn't usually do the whole tour. Uh, but if she had, she could have easily, um, you know, went one, one every grand, you know? So, uh, oh, yeah. definitely she was, she was, she was, uh, you know, every now and then you get a fighter that comes from out of nowhere where you've never seen them before. And, uh, they just, they just start, uh, uh, their own story, you know? So she's one and, of those. And Donnie White, you see her, you know, she's tough. Um, Nikki Carlson Lee, you see her. You know she's tough. Joyce, you see that girl, beautiful gal. You don't expect to be a brawler, but she'll very, punch, very punch person, you. Very friendly person, very, very, very respectful person. She'll uh, punch you in the teeth. Very good person, too. But she'll punch and kick you in the teeth when it comes time to spar. She's a brawler. Yeah, yeah. and <laughs> Kia, when she, when she scores, that's, you know, that's, that's a beautiful thing. Like, you know, people who Kia when they score. That's 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 the best. I love that, you know. Damon Gilbert, myself, you know, Kia when you score. That's that's, probably, that's amazing. Yeah, it's probably because she's probably trying to lay it on you a little bit harder, you know what I mean? Like, oh yeah. <laughs> that's it. That's it. I love it. I love it. And that that's that's something that uh I mean, just really speaks to 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 uh to my heart for, in terms of martial arts. When you hear somebody like they doing kata out there, it's awesome. So, uh so yeah, Joycey She's a hard, she's a tough one. She's a tough one. But, you know, the other, the other uh, woman we were talking about earlier, Kayla. Yeah. Why don't, you, why don't you go ahead and talk, talk, cause you probably know her a little bit better. You're the one that mentioned her. Uh, right. I'll go and Kayla's follow up. Level, you yeah. Her first, man. Yeah. Kayla's on another level. I tell you what, I did uh, a workout of hers once and I really, well, I couldn't finish it really. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I kept joking afterwards, saying, "Well, she trying to embarrass me? What's going on?" <laughs> you know, I couldn't really finish the workout. Uh, she is, uh, uh, I mean, she's she's the she's she's the new. You know, it's like the the you have the different generations of 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 sport karate uh, fighters, and you know, she's she's uh, definitely. Um, part of the new generation. I mean, she's, she's dynamic. Uh, she's strong. I've seen her, uh, fight Morgan Plowden and not back down a bit. Uh, and, uh, uh, actually I saw her and, and, um, uh, let's see, when was this? This was, uh, at, uh, at the AK Grand Nationals, just this past AK Grand Nationals. Um, First, uh, her and uh, let's see, I want to think. I think Elizabeth beat uh, Impex in team fighting, um, and then uh, Kayla fought Morgan for the Warrior Cup on stage, and uh, it was an awesome fight. It was an awesome. I'm not. I'm, I don't remember the score. I think that maybe Morgan had a, had a lead in the beginning. Or, or, or maybe, maybe, maybe they were close in the beginning, and then Morgan opened up the lead a little bit. Uh, but you know, no matter what the score was, the fight was dynamic. It was awesome. And Kayla's much smaller, uh, but you, she fights like a giant. I'm telling you, you, she fights like a giant. Do you know what her age is, or if anybody out there knows what her age, pop it up for us. I mean, because to me, she looks like a young fighter. And she's still, she's just starting. I mean, she has a long way to go. In yeah, my she, eyes, she, 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 she has a very youthful. I mean, she's young. Uh, I don't, I don't know. I don't think she's as young as I thought she was when I first met her. So she appears to be. You know, she could, she could. You know, I don't like to talk about women's age too much, but she appears yeah. that she could, she could be. She could have been a, a, you know, eighteen, a teenager, but. Yeah. Uh, She's she's um she she's not that uh uh you know that new to the to the game. She's she, 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 she's been around. She's she's done uh and and she 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 does waco. She's she's uh you know she can transition into that really well. She has a great sweep, you know. So I believe she's been around for a while. We're just getting to see 
uh, the best of her. Um, I, to be uh, honest, yeah, I'm going to be honest. I didn't know too much about her. I heard about her. That's about it. So I went yeah. ahead and I reached, I went ahead and reached out to her and had her send me some, um, some videos. And of course it was yeah. all hot. And I had yeah. to look, I had to look cause I had to make sure I wanted to see some of her flaws as well. But I mean, her highlights, I don't see repetition. I mean, I see like she does this nice, beautiful tight chamber sidekick and she's really good. She's really technical. She's really yeah. good at adapting right on the fly. I saw people kind yeah. of like reach out like they were going to check and all of a sudden she would bring that leg up right from that sidekick and slap with that nasty axe kick. Combination. Of, bop, bop, bop. Yeah, real yeah. quick. Side, side, side. And as soon as you saw someone go to reach for her foot, she brought it right up and just smashed people in the face. Um, she would she would fake in and then get people to draw and pull out and then get that kick. Uh, people would kick at her. She would pull them out, wait for them to drop the foot, stay right outside, work the blitz. I saw her fight tall fighters. I saw her fight short fighters. Um, I, I, I did a little bit of my homework, and to me, she's a problem. I really feel that because it's only her and Joyce, they're not going to match up against anybody else. And I, I love Joyce. I think Joyce is a tough fighter and scrappy. I just think that Kayla here is the perfect person to fight her because of the style of fight that Absolutely. she fought. Very technical, stays on the outside. It's not that I don't think Joyce is going to slap her and catch her maybe with her long, because I know it happens to me. Sometimes I'm thinking, oh, I'm just outside of your slide, and then boom, it catches yeah. me. So I think she'll get caught with something here and there, but I think she'll make the adjustments. And I think this one, she's a, she's going to be a tough nut to crack for yeah. Joyce. Well, her technique is so tight. Her technique is so tight. Maybe that's the one thing that she could um, – have a slight improvement on is her scrappiness. It's just like to break that technique every now and then because her technique is so crisp and so tight. So yeah, it's she, like you know, she counted bop, 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 and it's like that. You, you don't, you never see her really overreaching or, 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 or you know, desperate for a point. But sometimes you got to get desperate for that point. Sometimes you gotta, you gotta take you know a few more swings. But yeah, she's so crisp and uh, such an athlete. Like I told you, uh, you she works so hard. And she, you know, just in a, a few times out that I've that I've been able to to watch her personally, um, and uh, I, I trained with her a couple of times. Uh, man, I've been just so impressed by by Kayla, uh, probably more than she knows. Yep. You can't buy a six pack, and I'm telling you, I think I saw a six pack on that girl. So I mean, it's obvious. It's a testament to how hard she works out. She's she's definitely a physical specimen. She's an athlete. She takes it serious, and yeah. it's. And I, I look forward to seeing more of her. And you're right. She's, yeah. she's she, what she sent me besides the video. She's won uh, lightweight grands already at several of the big NASCA tournaments. Yeah. She, uh, she went to the Irish Open and took, I believe, um, third is her highest. Right. But, you know, that's a pretty tough event. And I know a lot of times now that we're starting to get I mean, Europe's always been there. United States has always been there. But now we're starting to get a big influx of these people from Guatemala, from Mexico. Yeah. About Venezuela, I know a lot of these guys are trying to get over there. I don't know what the problem is, sponsorship or, or visa or what, what the deal is. But I know a lot of these guys are getting over there. And I also think that's what's helping their game is the fact that they're opening themselves up to all these different leagues, rules, fighters. And it's yeah. that's what's making these fighters – you know, great or as good as us. So, you know, I, I got to say kudos to her. She's an awesome fighter. She's been winning open weight. She's been winning grand. So she, she she's yeah. a tough crack. So real she's quick. Got, she got that karate attitude too. I remember hearing a whole bunch of people um, complain about the judges one day and, and about, you know, this wasn't, you know, they was just whatever. They should have got this point, that point. And uh, Kayla was like, yeah, she turned around to them. She was like, look, like you need to work harder. That's it. No, <laughs> don't blame the judges. You just need to work harder. That's it. I said, that's, that's what we were always taught, you know, not to complain, just work harder. So, so she's got that spirit. I like it. Hey, so I'm going to go old school right now. I don't know if you know who this guy is, but when I was in NBL back in the days, I believe it was him, 
uh, Juan Carlos Corona and Luis Fernandez Jimenez that had a team. I forget the name of the team. They're probably going to kill me. If anybody knows the name of the team, please drop it. Let me know. Um, but I remember those guys had a pretty tough team. And this guy, Roberto Perez. Was it AIG? Were they AIG? Might be. Might be. They had that. And he was the little, little guy with the big old, you know, yeah. cap. Uh, really quick. Really wild, though. I remember he would throw, like, a lot of just crazy underneath hook kicks. They love that. NVL, they love that. That's that's Yeah. And that's the one thing I want to say about him. He's kind of... He's kind of a little bit of the one that I'd want to really want to match up against the right person because right. to me, he when he fights the right way, he does this thing where he fakes and then he kind of comes forward and gets people or he'll kick, 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 and he stays back enough where he drops the foot and people will attack and he's really good at going away. But the one thing he does, he does this wild where he'll – yeah, I don't know if you ever saw, but he'll spin and then he'll step. And if he sees people back up, he keeps yeah. spinning. Yeah. And that, yeah. yeah, and if he finds if he fights somebody like Apache or someone that has, or uh, like we talked about earlier, Ronaldo, someone that has a little bit more of the technical skill, likes to step in. I could see them doing well against Roberto. I think as long as Roberto Perez. Didn't get fancy. Didn't let his emotion get the best of him. Because as we know, these guys get really emotional with each other. We've talked about it. When they fight, they score. Ah, ah. And sometimes you can get the emotion. You can let the emotion get the best of you. So I think as long as he fought technical, he would do good. But I think he's the one guy that I'd be worried about not to let the score get away in right. case he gets crazy. And try to go. Nah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna land that sick point and get it back and blah blah blah. Because that's the one thing I did notice watching his fights. He did land a lot of the stuff, but he lands a lot of the stuff against people that back up. Right. Well, as these guys don't back up, and a lot of these guys honestly are all heavyweights. Besides Apache, they're all yeah. heavyweights. So if they're throwing the sidekick and this guy's spinning and you're getting sidekick, nine times out of ten you're gonna get flung on the floor. So. Right. I really find this guy would be the hardest guy if I was from Team Mexico to find the perfect matchup and to just tell him, don't let the score get run up on you. Fight smart because these guys are going to come. So let's let's yeah. fight fight defensive. So what do you got to say about Roberto? Yeah, I remember Roberto, and and you know, it, you know, I was a, in big. I was a big NBL fighter for a long time uh, before I got to get to. Uh, my NASCA days, you know, I would do like one NASCA tournament a year. And, uh, you know, that's all, that's all we could afford at the time. And then, uh, as I got older, I got to do more, but we did some NBL, um, you had to do one tournament, you know, and then you go to the super grand. So, uh, that was a different path. So I got to, I think I, I first saw you there, Mike. Right. And, oh, uh, okay. I was an NBL guy. Yep. That's right. And, uh, and Raymond Daniels and all those guys. So it was good for us. It was good to switch also to NASA. It was good to have the, the two Both. circuits. It was good to have different sets of rules. It was good to have the different environment. You know, everything was different. Um, and, um, you know, that's a lot of sacrifice technique, beautiful technique. Uh, but, you know, he didn't up on the ground a lot. Um, with, with that change in, in terms of, you know, Hey, you can't fight from the ground. That would be a big change. That would be a big change for his style. Uh, yeah. Hand uh, down a lot. Yeah. I mean, I've seen him, I've seen him, you know, fight toe to toe and throw reverse punches and stuff like that. But th I've seen the best of him when he can just go freestyle, you know? So that's a big thing. I, we see a lot of NBL fighters like that who were just their freestyle and it was just awesome. Uh, but then, uh, when it came to, you know, well, you can't put your hand on the ground, you can't land on the ground, um, that really changed their fight up. So, yeah, he'd have to adapt to that. Um, I think uh, when he's going forward with that, you know, that spin kick that you talked about where he would spin and then throw another spin to throw the kick. And, I mean, he could do that and and uh, he'd be okay. But some of the de defensive techniques he would throw uh, would, would, would end, you know, he'd, he ended, ended up on the ground. So if he's fighting somebody who's, who's bigger than he is or somebody who's going to push him back. Uh, he's got, he's got a lot to adapt to now. I mean, he can move around. He has good movement. He can move around that ring. 
Um, but uh, then he'd have to adapt his, his technique to be able to th- throw that defensive or that counter technique and still stay on, the, on his feet or follow up after that. So it'd just be a little adjustment. But as an athlete, I think, you know, someone like that can adapt to anything. If you actually give him the instructions, he'll adapt to it. You know, uh, it's definitely um, easier to tone down than it is to amp yourself up. So he'd have to tone it down a little bit, some of the moves in order to keep his balance and, and whatnot. But, uh, you know, an athlete like that, it, it'll, it'll find a way. He'll start jumping <laughs> and he'll land on his feet, you know, instead of instead of falling and throwing the hook kick. He'll just throw a jump spin hook kick or something like that. He's very dynamic. Uh, he's definitely a great champion. Definitely uh, represent his country well. Uh, when he came, you know, in the NBL, I knew who he was. Um, I've known who he was for a long time. And I would, I would, you know, I saw him in the magazine. I, want, I was wondering about him. Who's this guy? I don't know if he and, and, uh, and Derek Cox, did they, did they, did they ever, I remember Derek Cox was kind of in that division. I don't, I don't know. If, I don't recall. That's- yeah. I don't recall if they fought, but I, I tell you this, uh, I, he's another guy that of all the guys that I asked from Mexico, He's definitely got a, a a lot of respect and rapport because he was one of those names, even though he's old school. Yeah. Everybody brought him up. So, I mean, I don't know if he's a mentor or a tutor to a lot of these new and upcoming guys, but obviously yeah. um, he's left an impression on a lot of these guys because everybody mentioned him. I remember him to this day yeah. as well. There's a whole bunch of, I mean, uh, just to name a few other guys just from Mexico, uh, Older guys, I don't know if you remember Augusto de la Barrera. I don't know if you remember who, who he was. Not, not sure. Luis Fernando Jimenez, I just mentioned him earlier, and Juan Carlos Corona. Those guys are another uh, good guys. Uh, another newer guy is Iker Marine. Big. He's a big heavyweight uh, and can kick pretty well. And another guy that's a big heavyweight that's pretty good is Luis Guevara. I don't know if you've heard of Luis Guevara. He fights for Team Proper as well. No, yeah. Yeah, I know it. I know Luis. Yep. yep. And Venezuela, I don't want to leave those guys out, but a couple guys there that we're not going to talk about today, but also legends. Tony Honsani, which, by the way, all these, I don't want to say all these guys, but most of these guys have been mentored by him. Still to this day, um, fight with or for him for Team Legend. They're all in yeah. Florida. Uh, Yoscar Gomez, which we talked about last week. Christian Rivas, which is a, a new up and coming guy. Uh, Gustavo Martinez, which if you guys don't know, back in the days when we fought team fights in Battle of Atlanta, he fought with Apache and, and another gentleman. Gentleman, another person that they also mentioned was Jose Leonardo. So I want to make sure that you know yeah. we didn't forget about you guys. There's a lot of fighters to mention. We're trying to mention who we pretty much talked to and who everybody kind of wanted to to highlight or put a spotlight on. I might even throw some of these names in the team fights. Cause if me, if I had these chess pieces, I'd probably use different chess pieces, but real quick, we got one more each and we got two strong guys. One of them is Brian Rodriguez, which uh, we were just talking about him recently. He yeah. team proper. I believe right now he's been traveling, doing a lot of different tournaments, Waco, Nazca. Um, he's a guy that a lot of the older guys are talking about. I guess they train train with him and saying that this guy's real tough. And he's like a freight train. I, I noticed that he does really well going forward. He loves to push. And his defense is good enough that he can. He can throw that nice sidekick. He's, he's a big guy. He's a strong guy. And he backs a lot of people up. And then eventually, if you run out of real estate, he'll catch yeah. you. Another thing he does really well, he'll come in. And he does what we used to call the Chris McBride, because Chris McBride, for those of you guys who don't know, is an Anthony Price guy from uh, Cincinnati, Ohio. He used to have that nice little tight D. And he'll come in, and he'll just take a sidekick, boom, to the arm, and then he'll just wait for you to drop your arm, and he just times it perfect and throws that nice little body punch. So that's a couple things that I saw him do real well. A couple things that he does real well is go forward. But another thing, and follow up, another thing – he does do every once in a while. He kind of steps off and fades and does a sidekick, but he doesn't do as well going backwards. I find that people that are able to back him up or get him on his heels, he's a little bit easier of a fight. 
if you let him to go forward or allow him to kind of get the leg up, you're going to have a long day trying to fight against him. Um, another thing that I noticed about with him besides that, I can't think about it right now. It doesn't do well going backwards. What did you write? Um, the other thing I noticed is he gets tired. The second half of the fight, a lot of times he'll be fighting people and he starts off strong and he'll be up. I just saw a fight with him and Christian Rivas, which is another guy that I just mentioned, up and coming guy. I think Christian took him out. It was in a tournament in Florida, which Florida has a lot of big tournaments. And these guys are all competing there constantly, especially against each other and just making each other better. But I noticed yeah. up, he was doing well. And then he just kind of gassed out and faded. And I noticed Christian kind of got on a roll and kind of came back. And that's one thing that I worry about, Brian, is he goes out there, he comes hard, he goes strong, but he's got to be able to last the whole fight. Because if not, you got all these points you rack up. And in a team fight, you know, it's all about these swings, like the basketball games or like a football game. One minute, you're up, you're up, you're up, and all of a sudden you're kind of fading and you're allowing these guys to come back in the fight and everybody's getting excited. Now you're nervous, you're you're overcompensating, you're trying harder, you're getting more tired. So for me, I think the one thing he's got to work on is, yeah, put the pressure, but to put the pressure at the right time and don't be always so forceful because I find that the one thing he did do is he, he does tire himself out. He gasses out a little bit. But other than that, he's a tough fighter. He's a tough guy to crack for me if you're fighting against him. So what do you have to say about Brian, sir? Yeah, so, you know, I, I feel like maybe Brian is a little, maybe he's, he's a little uh, slightly burned out a little bit maybe recently because he, he wasn't uh, the, he wasn't getting tired uh, when, I, when he first started uh, fighting on NASCA, when I first started watching him fight on NASCA. He wasn't getting tired. Um, you know, he... You know, he was just one of the guys that everybody was looking out for in terms of, you know, uh, who they have to beat in order to win a division. You know, he was pretty, um, you know, he was pretty much on a roll. Um, you know, it can happen when you're competing, you know, so many tournaments a year where you can have some rough patches where um, you might not be uh, uh, winning like you used to, you know, maybe for a few months or maybe longer or something like that. But, um you know, maybe that's that's what's happened recently. Um, but uh, and not that I've gotten to see him a lot recently. I'm just just kind of uh, looking at the you know, how how uh, how things have happened over the past few years. He was uh, definitely uh, on fire when he stepped out there uh, in the beginning, which is just a few years ago. Um, he is not really that big. He looks like he looks big because he's strong. He's pushing people around. Uh, but he's really not that big. He's, you know, he's not a big guy, but he's strong. Yeah, he, and he, he, he's, looked, you know, he looked like he was manhandling most of the people that I saw. Him yeah, yeah, he's strong. <laughs> and, and, and his attitude, you know, is when he's fighting is just, uh, you know, his, his sportsmanship in terms of uh, his, his, his intensity with his attitude. And, you know, he'll, he'll you know, now I don't want to say talk some trash, but he'll look at you in, in certain ways where, uh, you know what he means. You know he's got he's got a great uh, great showmanship and and great spirit out there. Uh, I really like Brian, uh, one of my favorite fighters. Um, and you're right, he's versatile. He can do anything. He push, does does mostly uh, go on the offensive, uh, moving forward. Uh, again, I, I I've I've seen him uh, fight well, moving back as well, moving away as well. Uh, but like I said, sometimes we, we, you know, we go through little patches where we're not fighting um, uh, on the same uh, page that we were fighting on the previous year or something like that. And, you know, that time, sometimes tournaments catch up with us. Um, but I'm sure that we haven't seen the best of Brian yet. Uh, like I said, uh, it, when he first came out, it was, he was like the only name you were hearing. He was really, really taking the world by storm. And I'm sure he has plenty of that left in him. Uh, yeah. But like you said, I haven't heard his name as much in recent, you know, in, in the re last year or so uh, in terms of, you know, who's out there uh, dominating or, or winning. Um, but um, I'm sure we haven't seen the best of him. He is really, really a special fighter. So, yeah. he's, uh, you know, he, I would say he's one of those sponsored guys. So he must be special because somebody yeah. pick him up over here. So they ran out of people and they went and picked him up. And I definitely think like oh, yeah. you He's good. He's tough for sure. So Absolutely. 
I see I see a second wave of, of Brian coming. You Most, know, he's, getting, nope. he's young. He's young too. I'm sure he's busier now. You know, when some when you start, you know, hey, when you when you get out there and you make a name for yourself, you get busier. You get a lot of. I'm sure he's he's busy with a lot of things, and you find that 